Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable from Deputy Prime Minister Jawad Al-Arayyad in which he congratulated His Majesty the King on the historic initiative by the Kingdom to enact a peace declaration with Israel. The Deputy Premier affirmed that the step reflects the directives of His Majesty the King that support the march of peace in the Middle East and achieve security and stability. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable from His Majesty's advisor for diplomatic affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, in which he congratulated His Majesty on the historic step to declare the establishment of ties with Israel. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed affirmed that this step embodies His Majesty's approach of openness and coexistence, as well as constructive communication and cooperation. He wished His Majesty lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting and Secretary General Dr. Yasser al-Nasr delivered the following statement. The cabinet praised the historic step in announcing a peace deal with Israel, which reflects the approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in maintaining peace as well as enhanced international cooperation that ensures peace, stability and prosperity in the Middle East. The cabinet added that this deal aims to enhance efforts and come up with just and comprehensive solutions, according to the Arab Peace Initiative, to ensure the rights of the Palestinian people. Following the royal directives to alleviate the economic repercussions of the pandemic, the government decided to take care of electricity, water and municipal fees for all subscribed citizens of their first home for a period of three months starting from October 2020 and not exceeding the bills of the same period last year for each subscriber. The cabinet directed the Central Bank of Bahrain to postpone loans installments for citizens affected by the pandemic until the end of this year. The cabinet then urged citizens and residents to commit to social distancing and instructions in order to curb the spread and added that the people should assume responsibility in this regard. The cabinet then expressed sincere condolences to the Sudanese government on the demise of victims of floods and affirmed Bahrain's firm stance towards Sudan. The cabinet praised the directors of His Majesty the King to send humanitarian and relief aid to Sudan. Upon the recommendation of the Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the cabinet approved a draft law amending a number of provisions of the current commercial companies law. The amendment include adding new features that provide further investment options and increase companies' income, as well as strengthening the rights protection of minority investors. The cabinet examined the repercussions of issuing the constitutional court ruling on the unconstitutionality of extending the period of parliamentary investigation committees for over four months. The cabinet discussed the National Oil and Hazard Hazardous Substances Pollution Contingency Plan, which includes the means of controlling oil spills and the mechanism of activating them after determining the level of the spills. The cabinet approved a proposal on the payment and sentence for employees in Quran recitation centers. A proposal prioritizing Bahraini farmers in Hurat Ali was also approved. The cabinet approved a number of proposals implemented by the government at the time of their submission regarding the postponement of housing installments, the salaries of Bahraini employees in the private sector, and the application of work from home as well as support of freelancers. The cabinet was briefed on the outcomes of the first high-level meeting to which His Royal Highness the Crown Prince received an invitation from the Secretary General of the World Health Organization to launch the Access to COVID-19 Tools Accelerator, which His Royal Highness delegated the Minister of Health to attend. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the newly appointed commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command of the 5th Fleet, Vice Admiral Samuel Paparo. Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Naimi and Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Naimi were present. The Commander-in-Chief praised the historic re relations between the two countries and the development witnessed at all levels, especially the military field wishing him continued success in his new duties. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for Ziyah Zainal praised the government decision to alleviate financial burdens on citizens due to the pandemic and expressed thanks and appreciation for the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his keenness to meet the needs of citizens. She added that the cabinet decision to take care of electricity, water and municipal fees as well as postponing loan installments affirms that citizens are the government's top priority. She praised the keenness of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and its care for the Representatives Council and hailed the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. 
The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that the continuous support to alleviate financial burdens on citizens due to the pandemic translates the royal directives and reflects his direct keenness on citizens to provide them with decent living conditions despite the circumstances. He held a decision made by the cabinet on the payment of electricity, water and municipal fields, as well as the postponement of loan installments. Following the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, arrived in Washington. The Minister will take part in the signing ceremony of the peace agreement between the UAE and Israel, as well as signing the declaration of peace between Bahrain and Israel. The ceremony will be held in the White House tomorrow in the presence of U.S. President Donald Trump, Emirati Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, in addition to senior officials of the U.S. government. Dr. Zayani was received by Bahraini Ambassador to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and officials of protocol at the U.S. Department of State. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, held a telephone call with Israel's Regional Cooperation Minister, Ofer Akunis, have exchanged congratulations on the peace declaration between Bahrain and Israel, which was announced following a phone call between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, U.S. President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The two ministers reviewed aspects of cooperation under the umbrella of peace, which will reflect positively on the ec economies of the two countries, especially in the commercial, industrial and tourism sectors. The region is on the verge of a big boom in various economic sectors that will result in increased trade exchange, attracting joint foreign investments and creating more job opportunities. A telephone call was held today between Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al naimi and his Israeli counterpart Benny Gantz. They discussed the importance of Abraham Accord with Israel in enhancing regional stability in the Middle East. They also talked about their common expectations for establishing a close partnership between the two defense ministries, which will contribute to developing the capabilities of the two countries and maintaining regional security. The Israeli defense minister proposed to host his Bahraini counterpart during an official visit to Israel. The two ministers agreed to continue dialogue between them. The Supreme Council for the Environment in cooperation with the United Nations Environment Program Regional Office for West Asia held the third environmental forum virtually under the slogan Ozone for Life, 35 years of protecting the ozone layer, coinciding with Ozone International Day. Dr. Bindana emphasized the Kingdom's active role in protecting the environment from the severe damage caused by the ozone hole since the first launch of the Vienna Convention on the Protection of the Ozone Layer and the Montreal Protection on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. He also referred to the new legislation package recently launched by the SCE that aims to protect the environment and help the recovery of the ozone layer, which was signed by His Majesty the King's personal representative and president of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah. Allah bin Hamad al-Khalifa. is actually the International Day of Ozone and we took this opportunity to enlighten the whole private and public sector about the new methodology on recycling of the ozone depletion chemicals and procedures. What we have done is we created a recycling center and we also enforced that, that all cylinder it has to be reusable the idea is to reuse the chemicals that is on the air conditioning now and take it to the recycling center and use it again. This will develop an opportunity for jobs for Bahrainis and will reduce the cost of those chemicals on, on the pockets of Bahraini populations. At the same time, reduce the amount of discharging those chemicals into the atmosphere which will harm our uh, ozone layers. Supreme Council for Environment this year uh, is focusing on the forum uh, for a week uh, talking about ozone for life. We are focusing on four things. Number one is how to manage the refrigerator and the refrigeration sections. Uh, number two, how to prevent the ozone that deplete ozone substances or ozone layer. Number three is how to uh, licensing the technicians and engineers working in the rack sector, which is refrigeration and AC sectors. And number four is focusing 
on how to uh, licensing these people and also uh, give them a permission from the Supreme Council for uh, Supreme Council for the Environment for five years. So this is the main sectors that we're talking about. Bahrain took a historic step in announcing the declaration of peace with Israel, which will contribute to enhance peace and stability, as well as opening up wider horizons of cooperation in the region. More in this report. This historic step comes from the Kingdom's belief in the establishment of a just and comprehensive peace in the Arab region, while adhering to the Arab policy based on supporting the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. Promoting peace efforts and opening horizons of stability in the region and the world is the goal of the Kingdom of Bahrain, and this step will pave the way to achieve it. Bahrain paved this path with courageous decisions prioritizing the Palestinian people by declaring support for peace in the region. The Kingdom has always been proactive in spreading the culture and ideas of peace, and the step to support peace with Israel affirms Bahrain's firm and permanent stance towards the rights of the brotherly Palestinian people and their need for obtaining their full legitimate rights. The Kingdom of Bahrain added its efforts to those of the UAE in defending the causes and interests of the nation and obtaining the rights of the Palestinian people. The Kingdom also supports the efforts of all our partners in seeking to reach a peaceful solution that protects the interests of the Palestinians. The declaration to support peace with Israel does not contradict Bahrain's commitment to the Arab Peace Initiative and the decisions of international legitimacy. The Kingdom of Bahrain takes its decisions based on its national and Arab constants and its supreme security interests. Among those constants are the Palestinian rights that cannot be waived. This historic step taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain comes from the wise vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to achieve a just and comprehensive peace in the Middle East through establishing diplomatic relations with Israel in order to achieve a safe and more stable future for all people in the region. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,413 with 489 recoveries, 721 registered new cases and one death. 106 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 613 are contacts of active cases and two are travel related. The deceased was an 85-year-old citizen and the Ministry expresses heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.